First of all, Joe, uh, how did you get into running? Because uh, obviously I know it's been a big passion of yours for the last how many years. Um, what was the first thing that got you into it? From an early age, I've always been quite active. Um, when I was in school, I'd be playing football and rugby and basketball. And I wasn't ever particularly the most naturally gifted. But I would always give it my all, always work hard for the team. And those are attributes I think are really important with running. But um, I've always wanted to be quite big and strong. I used to watch World's Strongest Men and still do. And um, I had weights and I was probably doing them from too early of an age really. But didn't ever really become quite big. But um, yeah, that was my aim from an earlier age, from a younger age, to try to be as big as I could. But um, I'm very competitive and there wasn't really any point to that. But I was watching the Olympics when we got it in 2012 and I was unemployed at the time. So I got to watch it all and I enjoyed all the sports because you had someone to support. I was even watching something... Like the equestrian, and because you had a, you had Britain to support, even that was interesting. The kayaking, but I really got interested in the athletics and the Super Sunday with Mo Farah and Jess Ennis, and um, yeah, we it was just amazing the track and field events, and um, I started doing running just to get some fitness and mainly to save money, honestly. To, I was running to college and, um, yeah, gradually doing more and more. I would watch the um, London Marathon on telly and you could see that anyone could do it and you'd see people at the front, how quick they would go. But even at the back, you could see people that were doing it and... It would take them, some people, seven, eight hours, but they were determined to complete it. And I was looking at that thinking, looking for challenges, thinking that's something that I'd like to do. And um, I remember my dad saying that I wouldn't be able to just go and do that. It takes training to get there. But I had, knew in, I had the mindset that, yeah, I could do it tomorrow if I wanted to. But... Um, yeah, it was something that was quite high on the list of things to do. But um, I ended up getting a job then in Greg's and um, I was running back and forth there and I would end up, there's Park Run organisation was starting up. Well, it's, you mean go for a long time, but the first I heard of it was um, when it, they started it in Ponty in 2013, late 2013. So... I couldn't do the first fall because I was working, but I got started there. And I remember my first 5K was 1916, 19 minutes, 16 seconds. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed that. When I started, I didn't really know, have any idea of what kind of pace I'd be doing. I didn't have a running watch. And I went down on the start. And I went on the start line at the front when really I should have maybe gone behind a bit. But I just I started off and there was a runner there, Dan Bodman, that was really quick. And I'd be a bit silly really, a bit competitive. And I'd just go off with him. I'd stay with him for so long, not long at all really, not even the mini loop. And... um which is like maybe a quarter of a mile, and then he would just go out into the distance. But I would just keep working hard, and every time I'd keep trying to stay with him longer and longer, and I'd do more and more training, and um, gradually getting quicker and quicker. And um, any personal highlights? You know, you you know, you said a lot there about um, obviously talking about how you got into the running side. You know, what's the personal highlight of? the last seven or eight years that you've been running? Well, 
my personal highlights were really the first half marathon I did is right up there. Like I said, not being particularly a time that I'm now particularly pleased with, but just knowing that on that day I gave my all, um, that's got a rank high. Um, really, I was gradually getting quicker and quicker and doing the marathons I've done, gradually getting quicker, which I think is my main distance. But, um, yeah, one of the best years I've had running was in 2018 because I've got as far as I could, always getting injured, going so far forward, and then after I take a step back, taking three steps forward, one step back, but keep going back and forward and maybe not really eating as well as I should have. And I thought that this is the years of my life where you're going to be your quickest and I wanted to make the most out of it. So in 2017, at the end, I decided that for now on I'm going to eat well and see if that'll end up helping me become a better runner. And it worked. I ended up achieving a lot quicker times where I was running like one hour's 17 odd for a half marathon and then I ended up in 2018 doing Cardiff half in just a second under 110 coming down just behind the lead African woman on the TV but there's other races around that time where I was winning races and um, yeah just an amazing feeling being at the front of the race seeing I'm quite good at pacing myself now. I have my running watch and you know what pace you should be going off at. Just seeing people sprint off at the start and just gradually catching them up and overtaking them. Doing, um, I did Fusion 2020, a 20 mile race in one hour 55. Won that race. It was amazing. The week after Cardiff Half, I ended up and doing Wilshire Half Marathon in one hour 11 something. And, um, won that I was an incredible moment but um yeah and well what sort of uh impact does these this running have on your body you know you must be getting injuries left right and center um I did when I did that first London marathon I got to I think it was mile 21 and I seen this bloke and he was a bent over stretching right towards the end and um, I was gradually finding it harder and harder throughout the race and it's like a, there was a mag line in front of him I ran through it and then all my legs just seized up with cramp so I went to the floor to touch touch my toes stretch out my muscles and try to carry on but I just had hardly any energy and just plodded through to the end and at the time I was disappointed and I was always quite hard on myself, never particularly happy with what I've done and I'm still like it. You end up hitting a time and then you think, could I have done any better? And I think looking back, I probably did a really good job of it. It's just, like I said, like the, putting the routine in place, you're supposed to, some people, um, carb deplete and then carb load the days before to give themselves more energy. It was my first marathon, really, and I you need a few years of good training to really get into the marathon properly. There's some people that are incredible short-distance runners that would run a 5K in 15 minutes or quicker, but then if you're not training specifically for that distance it'll find you out and you'll you can run the first half of the marathon as quick as you want but gradually your muscles will tire and you can get to the end and you just struggle through but um yeah i've never particularly i've had times where i've achieved certain certain times and certain won certain races where i'm really proud but i think you've got to really enjoy as much of it as you can but I kind of think also how hard I am on myself is why I'm not satisfied is why I keep striving to be better because if I turned up to that first 5k and I was happy in 1916 I would have 
just kept doing the same thing. I wouldn't have really pushed myself as far as I can. And you have certain times in mind that you'd like to do, but really it's just seeing how far you can go and seeing just, yeah, just seeing what you can actually make, your body can achieve is the uh, ultimate aim. But when I started, like I said, doing sub-16 for a 5K was a dream, and I've done that now. And... Um, but then uh, there's the next target. I want a sub-15. I want a sub-30-10k. And that goal's going to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if obviously you've been running now for for quite a while now and you, you've said you've done these London marathons, what's your probably biggest tip or any key points for someone who wants to get into running? my top tips for people that want to get into running is just to, first of all, get out the door, get started, get a pair of running shoes um, and just start off. I don't know where your starting point is from, but um, you might be people that haven't ever run before. So first thing is get out the door. You might only be able to run to the end of the street, but then go gradually start walking and try to build in more running into it and then next time you just go further you go quicker you keep building and gradually keep up in the speed and up in the intensity of your training but also the i think the main thing with running is to try to um stop injuries and get in your recovery right because you'll end up getting quicker from the more training and you'll keep doing more and more but then your body will break down and in the long term then you would have been better off just gradually building and yeah you need to a lot of people's got certain ideas of things they should be doing what they feared they should be doing which aren't always right like stretching before you go running it's not a good idea because you shouldn't stretch cold muscles you want to um, warm them up gently and mainly stretch at the end of your run. And um, yeah, things like that you don't particularly like doing, having cold baths is supposed to help recovery. Um, having massage, getting these um, rollers or rolling sticks for your muscles. Um, you, sometimes you might need to get the right shoes. Certain people have different running styles so you might need orthotics for your shoes but um yeah one of the main things is recovery um also eating the right food i think if you're eating the right food then that'll help you recover having the right protein and the right vitamins there's a lot that goes into nutrition that i've found out this year which is um things like um, I have beetroot before I race so that thins your blood which means more oxygen will be going to your muscles when they need it which will help you perform better but then is also getting that balance between it can cause, um, cause gastro problems for you so I've ended up at the end of a race needing to rush off to the toilet and it's sometimes held me back having different stomach problems but um it's trial and error and learning what works for you but uh, yeah the main things are recovery training and your nutrition i'd say are the three things but the main thing is to enjoy enjoy running and um get out there and just yeah meet people and for me it's helped get my confidence high I was very introverted before going running and then I still am but um yeah it's helped me a lot being a lot more sociable and finally what what does make you know what what makes a marathon runner tick you know what makes them you know run all these miles every single day you know in your eyes you know what does make a, a good marathon runner well, I would say 
if you want to be a good marathon runner, I think you need to be doing a lot of miles. Even Mo Farah, which I hear does 140-odd miles a week for his 10-kilometer, 5-kilometer track races, he's had to up his distance and training, doing a lot more running on tired legs. And um, I listen to podcasts, running podcasts, marathon talk, and... Stephen Scullion, and they were saying about the distance that some of these Japanese runners are running. They're running 180-odd miles a week, 200-odd miles a week. And when you've got so many people over there that are running, there will be a lot of them that will end up getting injured from that. But then there'll be a lot of them also that don't, and then they'll end up making it because, for some reason, they can their body can cope with it. But... um. But um, yeah, for me, because I'm a labourer, I work in St. Fagans labouring, I'm on my feet all day and having a physical job makes it hard to also, you get to the end of the day and just being on your legs for that amount of time, you end up trying to run then on tired legs and it's hard. So maybe getting the speed work in that I need for a 5k that might be why my 5k times aren't as good in comparison to my half or marathon times. But having the job I have means that I'm running on tired legs and I'm becoming a better marathon runner because of it, where there'll be people that work in an office that maybe aren't used to, maybe they won't be as good as um, long distance running. But um, yeah. Being tired is a very hard part of being a good marathon runner. But one of the best things about being a marathon runner is you can eat more because you're doing so much training. But, um, yeah...